coming around, coming around, coming around, not coming around. Hello. Thank God it's, uh, what day is it? Thank God it's Thursday. And uh, welcome to a short presentation. I've got a couple of packages I want to go through and open up safely, as always, and a couple of items of interest. I hope everybody's fine and enjoying the train interviews. There's one more to go. By the time this loads and you see this presentation, you will have already uh, probably viewed all the train interviews from Portland. So uh, let's get started. Uh, one of the uh, it's 70 degrees today, very warm here in uh, uh, Southern California, Redondo Beach, California, 70 degrees. It's the 9th of February. And uh, just one item of interest today was the end of the Battle of Guadalcanal. Uh, Guadalcanal is a major battle during World War II against the Japanese. And it's an island, uh, part of the Solomon Islands in the South Pacific, uh, just east of Papua New Guinea. So if you can find Papua New Guinea on your map at home and just go east, you'll run right into a group of islands called the Solomon Islands. And it was quite a battle. It was quite, it was hell on earth. Just talk to any Marine or uh, journalist who was there. There was a journalist that was there. I'm not going to go into quite uh, any detail, but he was a very, very quiet journalist uh, and writer. And you know what he called uh, Guadalcanal? That effing island. That effing island. There was heat, mud, malaria, distrenity. You know, when you drink the water and you have problems down below. And uh, giant tropical insects, not to mention the suicidal mindset of the Japanese soldiers. It was just, it was, it was horrific. We lost 16,000 or so uh, uh, killed in action, uh, American forces. Uh, the Japanese, I think, lost about 20,000 or more, 23,000, and it lasted six months. So it was uh, a horrible battle, but it turned the tide and uh, uh, the, uh, the victory uh, with the Allied uh, the victory over Japan ended with the, uh, the Allies' uh, victory over Japan. It was a major battle and a turning point. There were a lot of battles in the South Pacific at that time, Iwo Jima, uh, the Battle of Okinawa, and they were just bloodbaths. Blood bats. So that was uh, on today's date, 1943. The Battle of Guadalcanal ended. Okay, so let's get to what we're going to do today. Uh, I have two packages here. Uh, I ordered these packages. I know what's in these packages. But just like anything else, you wouldn't buy a loaf of bread if you didn't check the due date or the, uh, you know... Uh, the exp expiration date. So even though I've known these, I've checked my iPhone 12 Max Pro. I've seen the uh, emails I've uh, received from. This one is from uh, Amazon. Uh, it's in a Prime bag, but I am not a Prime member. Uh, I, I don't order that m much merchandise to qualify, in my opinion, for a Prime uh, membership. And this is from another company, uh, not Amazon. And... Uh, I'll get right down to it. Uh, let's open them up safely. Like I said, I've checked. I've checked with the companies. I've called the uh, help desk and the uh, the uh, customer service, uh, both at Amazon and this company. This is a company called, uh, does it say, is it going to tell me? So I can tell you. Uh, it's the it's from the repairclinic.com. Repairclinic.com. Uh, so let's go. I'm going to put some safety glasses on. I've already had these packages in the freezer for approximately about two weeks. And, uh, and I've magnetized it. I have a, I've uh, looked it over very closely. This is a neat little uh, magnifying glass. See the light on there? Very nice. Very nice. And uh, I've gone over them with a fine-tooth comb. I don't see any uh, obvious signs of tampering or uh, unauthorized entry by a third party, perhaps. And uh, they look very good. They weigh very good, considering what I bought or ordered. So I'm just going to go right at it. I don't want to hold you up as long as, uh, uh, as short as possible. I've got my safety glasses, my ear protection. You never know. I've got a fire extinguisher here, of course. Always check your fire extinguisher. Make sure that needle is in the green band. Then you know you'll have the force and the pressure you need to successfully put out any potential fire hazard. 
I'll put my gloves on and let's do it. Let's do the box first. Well, let's do this one first. This is the one from Amazon. Always cut away. Always cut away. Some of you, you're probably... Uh, Wow, there it is. I knew what was coming. I ordered it and I uh, I knew what was coming. I ordered it and it looks like it's just what I needed. This is a Japanese uh, uh, bonsai uh, saw and it can be used for uh, anything that you really want to folding saw. And these are very, very sharp. You must be very careful and just like that. You could bring this out on a Friday and Saturday night, and if you get into an argument, you could threaten to cut somebody's ears off with this. That's how sharp it is. They wouldn't even know what hit them. Uh, they wouldn't hear you coming. And uh, so that was uh, mini folding pull saw. There you go. Can you read that? So I'm very excited. I can... Uh, I've been, I, like I said, I've had this for a couple of weeks now, but I've just been waiting for the opportunity to present it in a presentable form to you. And uh, is it made? In, it's probably made in Japan. Where does it say it was made? It's probably with all this Japanese uh, uh, writings. Uh, it's an 8.9 inch length. It's a 3.5 inch blade. So there you have it. Very nice. I had one already, but I've used it so often that it, uh, you know, the normal wear and tear, it, sometimes the handle will crack and this will dislodge from the handle. It'll bend if you use it as much as I have in the past. So it was time for me to replace it with a brand new one. And I'm very excited about that. So there it is. I use that for bonsai trees and any other branches. Uh, my olive tree, uh, my pine tree. I'm going to use it on my pine tree next. So there it is. Amazon does it again. A lot of people complain about uh, this gentleman uh, who makes all the money at Amazon. Well, what would you know? You'd have all that money too if uh, everybody in the world shopped at your store, right? You can't. You can't fault the guy. It's just too easy. Return policies are very generous. I mean, it's just a win-win situation for consumers of all across the globe. Okay, let's get to the next one. This one is a very unique gift. I think, uh, not gift, but uh, a very unique order. I think you'll like this. Again, I've uh, secured these packages. I've made sure they're safe. I've done all the precautions it takes to be a safe package. I'm confident it's a safe package. But I'm not taking any chances. And I encourage you not to take any chances either. Okay, let's go. Cut away. Always cut away. Bam. 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 And cut away again. Cut away again. Cut away again. Cut away again. Always cutting away. Last thing you need is a visit to urgent care to have a finger or a hand sewn up. Wow, these are fun. What you do with these is you... And then you can let the air out of these things. And there it is. Check your contents of your box. Take your safety gear off. And here it is. This is a switch for the refrigerator, the Whirlpool refrigerator. That refrigerator was from Lowe's, and uh, it was a used refrigerator, and I got a steep discount on it. It had some dents on the sides, but uh, I have a friend. Now, this is the switch. See? This is the switch that lets the light come on when you open the door. See, the way that springs. Now the switch I had broke. 
the spring, there's a spring in here. And I wasn't quite able to replace the spring. Hopefully this is the right one. And this will enable the light to come on when the refrigerator door opens. And this is a brand new or used, but a reconditioned or what have you. You know, it's some people, they get a little dent in a the refrigerator. They want to send it back. So, and it's other people's, uh, you know, some people's garbage is other people's savings. So this is the refrigerator. I really should show you the refrigerator. Maybe I'll show you the refrigerator and the switch that needs to be replaced uh, before I shut the video. So you'll know what I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. But uh, so this is your spring. There's a little spring in here and that enables the switch to come on, uh, the light in the refrigerator to come on and off. But I was uh, talking to a few of my colleagues, some friends, acquaintances, uh, uh, people who would care to listen to me. Uh, and I used to, I grew up on Long Island and it seemed like we had the same refrigerator forever. I mean, can you ever remember growing up that a, a, a new refrigerator was delivered to your home? They lasted forever. And unfortunately, like today, everything uh, is made, uh, this one, I think uh, most of this stuff, Whirlpool, is made uh, overseas, perhaps in China or uh, Taiwan or Korea. And uh, it's just, it's, 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 it's not made, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't believe it's, it's not as sturdy. It's the, the, the quality is, is, I mean, uh, look at me. I just got a new refrigerator and I'm replacing, this cost me $44, uh, you know, uh, this switch. And because, uh, you know, you don't want to open up the refrigerator and find out you can't see what's inside the refrigerator. Uh, you know, uh, you know, if you're a diabetic, you definitely need a light. I had a friend who's a diabetic and he actually ordered two lights for his refrigerator. He wanted he wanted all the light that he could possibly uh, shine on the food inside his refrigerator. So there it is. A little switch. So I'm glad you hope you enjoyed this short uh presentation uh i'll be headed off to southeast asia on the 16th uh there'll be some presentations quite a few presentations i can uh promise uh from southeast asia thailand and the philippines by the time this airs uh who knows when it'll be when 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 you'll see this i still have some more uh interviews in the can but you'll probably see so i just put them in the order that i uh uh, uh uh, that I produce them and then uh, you get them when you get them and uh, the better the internet the quicker these load and the quicker we can go also I want to make an announcement we're going to be doing uh, uh, the hostman presentation or dead air or uh, whatever whatever name's going on now I can't keep up but the podcast format is going to be taking place right at this map table that's right Right here in the privacy of my own uh, private residence, we're going to give it a go with the help of the iPhone uh, 12 Max Pro. I'll be the engineer. I'll be the uh, craft services. I'll be the host. I will be uh, the producer, the director, and I will be the writer. And I will do it all right from this desk. And I encourage you, uh, when you do see that first one, to make comments, share if you think this is going to work, do you think you're going to enjoy further episodes from this desk? Uh, and that's about all I have for today. Again, recapping, an item of interest on today was the uh, 1943, the Battle of Guadalcanal, ended with the Allied victory of Japan. Uh, it, was, uh, it was called the Watchtower Operation, and it lasted six months, and we lost 16,000 or so. Uh, killed in action, American uh, Marines and servicemen. Uh, it was heat, it was mud, it was malaria. This, uh, this, uh, I guess I'll just say diarrhea uh, because I can't pronounce that other word. Uh, giant tropical insects, uh, the suicidal mindset of Japanese soldier. It was a living hell and uh, uh, unbelievable. And, uh, and again, if you want to find out where the uh, Solomon Islands are, there's east of uh, 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 Papua New Guinea. Uh, and today again is uh, the 9th of February and 70 degrees. So let me, let me finish up by showing you where this switch goes. And uh, I found it on the internet. And 
this is the refrigerator right here. Uh, let me put my glasses on. And uh, I'll just do this the best I can. Is that the right lens? I think so. So as you can see, there's no light in the refrigerator now. So that, this is the switch that I'm gonna replace, see? See, when this comes like this, this lets your light come on and off. See, now it's on, but the spring is gone. There's a little spring, see, see the way it falls off there? And it fell off and I ordered a, a new switch. See? And uh, right now it's a manual light. You have to manually turn the light on. And this switch will go right here. And hopefully everything will be just fine. So that's it. So you know what the switch is for. You know what the, the pull saw is for. And it's Whirlpool. So it's kind of surprising when you get a a Whirlpool uh, refrigerator and, and you're changing the switch uh, is just uh, just about a minute after they, they, they give it to you. But this is what's happening. Uh, companies and corporations want to save money uh, any way they can. So they lighten the load, they lighten the materials, they cut corners and you get what you get. And here's some of the dents you might want to see. I don't know if you can see the dent. Where is the dent? Here's the dent. Can you see the dent? Let me get out of the way, you can see the dent. The shadow, I can't, I don't think you can see the dent. Can you see the dent now? See the dent? I think you can see the dent, see the dent? So that's a couple of dents, who cares? Nobody's gonna, who's, who's gonna look over here? Unless some crazy person wants to look on the side of your refrigerator. But I think that was the only blemishes on it. So that's it. That's the refrigerator. So have a good day. I'm glad that uh, I was able to make this presentation today in a safe manner. I'm glad that the packages were safe. Take the time to make your packages as safe as possible. Protect your home, your loved ones, and your neighbors and your community as well. Take the time to take the time. If you have the time, make the time to ensure that you're safe when packages are delivered to your private residence.